Hi everyone! Thanks for checking in to Letting Go Part 2. As we've been exploring this week, we all have habits. We've talked about some mental habits, things like obsessing or worrying about stuff. Lots of us have behavioral habits like over-consuming, uh, staying up late, those sorts of things. We also, all myself included, have emotional habits. These are things like being very quick to anger, stuff like that. And as we learned in the story that I shared in the beginning of class and I shared in the first video, even when the voice of God tells us to, and the story of that hiker tells us to let go, that in the face of real strong fear and uncertainty, we can't. When we are really, really consumed by our habitual parts of ourselves, we struggle to let go of the very thing that we desire to let go of. So I asked you all this week to think about what it is about yourself you wish you could let go of. And then we began to explore why we can't, and then some new tools to begin to ultimately start to. And so we have to understand that it is in our very nature to hold on. It's kind of how an organism survives. Holding on to life is a part of survival tactics. It's a way that we make it through, essentially. So it is a part of our human nature to grasp and to hold on. It becomes suffering for us and is causing us trouble when we hold on so tightly that it creates such a strong reaction in our lives that becomes pervasive. But the very awareness that we do this, the very thought that, okay, this is kind of how it goes, is kind of the first step in beginning to understand how to loosen the grip of holding on so much so that it's causing us to react and suffer in our life. So we'll think about it this way. We have these habits. Yes, we wish we didn't. You should see how many pairs of yoga pants I have in my closet. Talk about over-consuming. It's disgusting. And it's a part of myself that I know is present. And there are times in my life, way more in my 20s than now in my late 30s, where I was super quick to anger, very judgmental and reactive to everything. And I started to wake up a little bit later on in my late 20s, early 30s, and started to realize, holy shit, I'm quick to anger. Whoa, I am reactive. Whoa, I am judgmental. But I spent a lot of my adult, like kind of later adult years, completely unaware that I was like this, completely unaware that I had my habit. It had its hooks in me so much so, and I was oblivious to it. So think about it this way. I have been sharing this as one of the really insightful things that my meditation teacher taught me to kind of start to work with this concept of letting go in our practice and in our life. And she taught me to think of kind of a big, vast, open field. Picture the bright blue sky above you, big puffy clouds that filled the space, an abundance of green grass, maybe a couple of wild flowers. Now picture that in the middle of this vast open space, this field, there's a line. And you have two choices of the way you can live. Everything below the line would be the equivalent of not being aware that we have these habits, not being aware of anger, overconsumption, worry, whatever it is. And then we have everything that's above the line. And this is that there are still habits. There is still anger and maybe hurt and overconsumption, but we are aware of it. And it's taken a lot of time for us to maybe become aware, but the awareness of it is how we begin to work with it. So trying to use our yoga practice, our meditation practice, the other things that we do in our life and that we enjoy to help us to continually try to get up above the line, to simply just be aware. So that sure, we might be quick to anger, but we're going to slowly transform and be able to let go of this habitual part of ourselves just with being aware of our shit. That's the very first step, to be aware of anger. So that's been a kind of an interesting... What? Okay. So that's a large part of what we have been diving in and talking about this week is just this idea of how we can use our practice on and off the mat to try to work to get above the line. Because this is how we're going to start to allow ourselves to work with these habits and these things that we do desire to let go of. 
because ultimately what we become aware of is that letting go really truly means just letting it be. Then that's how we start to free ourselves from this. When I started to work with the self and started to kind of dive into these practices and learn mindfulness and meditation, I didn't like force myself to consume the yoga pants less. I didn't force myself or will myself to be less angry. I just started to sit in my shit, basically. I started to just be aware of anger, be aware of quick reaction, be aware of overconsumption. And over time, just simply existing in a space of awareness of it was what allowed me to start to let it go. And so sure, we will still have things that make us angry. We will still have moments where that habitual part of ourselves that needs to hold on so that it can acclimate itself to surviving and making it through time and space. Over time, we will be able to kind of let go with a little bit more ease. We'll be able to say, okay, I'm angry right now. I need to let that part of me go so that I can be present to this kind of vast open field. If you think back on that analogy that I shared a couple moments ago, I'd much rather be aware of anger, aware of overconsumption, aware of the habitual parts of myself that I'm working on. I'd much rather know that that stuff is there, living above the line essentially, than to be oblivious and unaware. Because yes, I might still have some angry sides of myself, I might still have parts of me that overconsume, but at least being aware of them, I'm also able to look up and notice the blue sky and see the puffy clouds and smell the wild flowers and see the green grass. So awareness simply is how we begin to work with the parts of ourselves we want to let go of. Be aware. Sit in your shit, essentially. And you'll start to appreciate the view. And over time, you'll realize that letting go is simply just allowing things to be as they are. Let it live through you. Hmm. So I'm enjoying this conversation. If you need anything, don't ever hesitate to reach out. On Sunday, I'll put up a little meditation so that we can continue to let go. I love you with all my heart. Thank you for sharing in your journey with me and allowing me to share so vulnerably and openly with you. Till next time, namaste.